Welcome back to the program. If you're just joining us, this is Bottom Line Africa right here on KTN News. And of course, it's time we start our conversation right here in studio. And we did ask you earlier, what are your thoughts about media coverage of electoral processes in Africa? I'm sure uh, the little feedback, I'm going to go through some of them uh, shortly right here uh, within uh, this uh, program. But first things first, uh, let me take you through some of the African uh, presidents or the leaders who have served uh, for a very long time in Africa. But before that, let's listen into you know, various voices from across the continent about this very topic that we're going to discuss tonight. They, they tried to give a wide coverage of what was happening before the actual dates of 8th of August 2017. The media played a very vital role in covering the general election. And uh, I appreciate that, except that uh, they have to uh, formulate a culture of African, of respecting the elders. This time around, the media did not come out as if it was inciting the, uh, the public, one community against the other, one section of the political divide against the other. Vya mahusika, vinalipia promo zao kwenye swala la chaguzi. Kuna wezekano mkubwa, jama hivyo, ama media hizo kutumika vibaya kwa sababu watu wanalipia. Kwa sababu kitu chochote, mtu wanapo kulipa. Ni lazima ukontro. Unatarajia kwa mba we mtazamaji na msikilizaji upate kitu kizuri kutoka kwa mwandishi wa habari. Lakini unazo kakuta kinacho torewa na kilicho fanyika ni tofauti. Kwa sababu mara nyingi huwa unakuta mtu siku zote nitakiwa usiendeshwe na mtu. Ujiendeshe mwenye kutokana na kazi kwa sababu umesha jitorea ni wito. Ukifanya kwa wito, basi utafanikisha kufanya kile wananchi wanacho kitaka. Lakini hali ya kuwa kama unafanya kusindikizwa na mtu, uko kwenye shindikizo na mtu, basi itafikia hali hata kama habali ni ya ukweli, lakini utaipotoshi. Nina cho kiona hapo kwenye sura la wandisho habali. Siza ni kama manisho habali za kafanya tofu hote kwa sabu ya ni, ni opande fulani, uwegeme opande fulani. Mina ona ni sahi tu wanapo tuwa zile habali, ona ni sahi. Tukua na tukio tunapata habali, tukua na matezo tunapata habali. Never to Namini Gamba, Vimba Bali, Vikuwa, Makinis, Kasabu, Chaguzu, Lukwana, and Samizum Kuba San and Bokuna, what to talk Anja Mosmania Vizuri. Well, those are various voices from across uh, the region expressing uh, their thoughts about how the media have covered elections in the continent. Now, let's go straight to our interview tonight and let me introduce our panel. Uh, once again, we have Mr. Omoyo. Omoyo is the CEO of the Media Council of Kenya. We have uh, Nakia White, who is a communication strategist, as well as Koki Robi Ochieng, who is a lecturer, journalism lecturer at the USIU uh, Africa. Many thanks all of you for joining us here in the program. Thank you for having me. Welcome. So let me just start uh, with you, Omoyo, and I'll play back that question we had for our viewers earlier. What are your thoughts about how media have covered elections, not just here in Kenya, but in the continent as well? I think media has performed fairly well. Mm -hmm. The main challenge is that we over-polarize the issues, and it becomes like a hose race. Mm -hmm. We forget the issues and focus too much on the personalities, this person versus the other one. Eventually, the issues in the election get lost as we put too much emphasis on the people involved. Mm -hmm. I think that would be my fair, first assessment. Uh, Nakia, do you have a different opinion? I'm sorry. I, I couldn't hear what his comment was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just basically play back uh, to you that question we had for our viewers earlier. What is your general opinion or your observation as, as far as you know how media have covered elections in Africa? I think it was a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was some really great points and, hot and, and light spots yes. or bright spots. And mm -hmm. then I think that there were some areas that weren't as great. Mm -hmm. So for example, I think the media did a great job of expressing and talking about the process of elections mm -hmm. and really promoting peace. I think they did an amazing job with that. Mm -hmm. I think some of the sour points mm -hmm. was not talking about uh, or not speaking about or reporting uh, the deaths that occurred, mm -hmm. either as a, as a part of protest or as a part of uh, aggression by the police. But I think that it's a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. uh, Koki, I'd like to hear your view as well. 
Um, I think the media basically followed the, the dictums mm -hmm. of reporting elections and looking at how processes were done pre the election mm -hmm. and uh, during and a bit after. So mm -hmm. it was a bit weaker towards the end in terms of telling us exactly what the going-ons were, mm -hmm. uh, what the demerits were, and basically, we got a bit confused towards the end. Yes. And Omar, this is where I want to bring you into this discussion. We've had a lot of feedback on Twitter, people, you know, criticizing how media has covered, you know, has been covering elections uh, in Africa, case in point, uh, the August 8th elections. Now, Mr. Omoyo, I think for a start, let's separate uh, journalists from, you know, uh, media owners. Of course, media owners or, you know, media organizations have their own, uh, own view as far as uh, politics is concerned. So where will that leave a journalist who is covering a certain story, for instance? I think this calls to point the issue about independence mm -hmm. and the question is independence from who? We must ensure that the editors are independent from the media owners who are basically business people. Mm -hmm. Then the reporters must be independent from the editors mm -hmm. because from time to time we have a reporter on the ground, they file a story but the editor in the studio thinks that uh, a different story should have been filed. Yes. And the same thing happens about the correspondence uh, from far-flung areas of the country mm -hmm. who are not receiving um, regular pay mm -hmm. and who rely on the local politicians for their subsistence. Mm -hmm. So we must also protect them, make mm -hmm. sure they are independent from the news sources. Mm -hmm. So it's different categories of independence that must be questioned so that we put in place clear structures to ensure that the media is professional and reliable. Nikita, I'm sure you'll agree with me that there are media houses who are pro this or pro that, anti this or anti that. For example, in the UK, there are media organizations who are pro, you know, Labour, there are those who are anti uh, Tory. So where will this leave a journalist who has an open mind, perhaps? Do they perhaps find themselves between a rock and a hard place, trying to please uh, their employer and at the same time trying to be objective? I mean, any good journalist, uh, there is a journalistic uh, impartiality that mm -hmm. is supposed to take place, right? Where, you know, you might have your personal opinions, but certainly when you are reporting, you have a duty to report and to be impartial. Mm -hmm. So I think your personal opinions is one, uh, it, of course, one thing, and you can support or vote whomever you want to vote for, but certainly when you are um, reporting the news, it's mm -hmm. important to be as independent as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Koki, I think that is mm -hmm. not the, uh, uh, let me just uh, go to Koki now. Koki, I think that is not the case here in Kenya because if you're found to have a certain political view and you're a journalist, then you're deemed to be impartial. For example, I, in a nutshell, a journalist supposed to have political views, first of all. Uh, yeah, <laughs> basically in public, I mean private sphere, mm -hmm. when you're discussing amongst your peers, probably you could have that. But the challenge will be, mm -hmm. how will you tell the story if you imbibe your subjectivity into it? It basically negates what the profession talks about mm -hmm. because you basically have to be objective and mm -hmm. you have to report facts. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a challenge when journalists are aligned to politicians mm -hmm. or their views are so um, strong that they affect what they're supposed to do. So, so basically you're saying journalists should have their own political view, but they should try and separate it from their stories. I think that's what a professional does. Mm -hmm. You basically mm -hmm. know that you have to report facts mm -hmm. and you have to verify the facts. Mm -hmm. and you have to get various sources. Mm -hmm. So you know the profession, you are part of the profession, so your personal view here really doesn't really count. And this is where I want to bring Omo into this conversation. There is a quote here from Mukhisa Kitui who says, I've never been a believer of the independence of a media house in terms of neutrality. Don't pretend to be neutral, he says, uh, in a world that is widely segmented because of different competing interests. One of the responsibility of informed news creation is to give reasons why one direction of thought and policy is better than the other. From what he says there, basically, uh, first of all, are you in agreement with what he says, and do you agree that uh, media houses are allowed to take sides, provided they have to give reasons for it? 
Yes, I think if you look at uh, the US, which uh, claims to be one of the most developed democracies, mm -hmm. the media, the editorial boards of all the leading media houses endorse specific candidates mm -hmm. and explain the reasons for that. The challenge on this part of the world is that we quietly endorse certain candidates mm -hmm. and then we pretend that we have not endorsed any, so we leave our viewers, readers and listeners guessing. Mm -hmm. It would be better if we openly came out and endorsed a specific candidate so that then people get to know which side we belong. Uh, excuse mm -hmm. me, can I jump in for a second? And, I, uh, Nakita, I Nakita, I think I'll have you now. And yeah. uh, Omoya has talked about a situation in the U.S. where you know, media houses openly support certain uh, candidates during an election. Uh, do you think that kind of a policy can be applied in African uh, con uh, countries? Well, particularly in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, I was reading the advertising laws. Mm -hmm. And for a media house or for a reporter to... Uh, announce they are supporting a particular candidate mm -hmm. is against the law. Yes. So I think that it, that's a really important. So mm -hmm. you don't want to break the law, and mm -hmm. certainly um, you want to be a reporter that people respect and seem as independent and impartial. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you come out and, and outrightly support a candidate, then you really don't uphold journalistic values uh, that you should have. So. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the United States, um, so th that's an important part as mm -hmm. well where, uh, excuse me for one second, that is a really important part as well where you, where reporters are not allowed to take a particular position. Mm -hmm. We do have news stations in the United States mm -hmm. um, that particularly Fox News that yeah. uh, wholeheartedly support Donald Trump mm -hmm. um, and support the rhetoric in, in a sense and don't challenge him. And so we hope that that doesn't become a worldwide phenomenon mm -hmm. and certainly we are ashamed of it in the United United States, well, I can speak for me, um, and hopefully that the rest of the world will be, become more independent as they begin or as they start to talk more and more about uh, That's a about very interesting observation, uh, Nakia. In now, Koki, you've had uh, Nakia's uh, comment there. Do you think uh, if Kenya also, you know, uh, takes this lead from the U.S. where they openly support a certain candidate, how will that augur with the viewers, for example, in Kenya? Mm-hmm. I think we are challenged in a way that our political systems are not as aligned as the ones in America or in the UK. Mm -hmm. It is very clear that in those countries you are either democratic or republican. Yes. So it's very clear what the virtues and values of those political systems are. Mm -hmm. But in Kenya, I think the politicians make around uh, to any political side that favors them. Yes. Uh, the political system or the political parties don't really stand for very distinct value systems mm -hmm. that they follow through. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the African contest is also more, you know, broader and plural, 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 plural the word is plural mm -hmm. in nature. So it becomes very difficult for you to say that there are clear blocks of people who think uh, in a certain manner yes. and live by that. Uh -huh. Now, Koki, there are media owners who've openly taken a stand, politically speaking, and, you know, Kenyans expect journalists to be objective, and mm -hmm. they're working under these media owners. Now, where will that leave uh, these journalists? And that begs the question, is the neutral and biased and objective uh, media, is this a false debate? Journalism is under siege, <laughs> basically, for from fake news, from control of media owners, mm -hmm. uh, from the house style, from the editorial policies, from the source, you know, the sources that you have. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, if you want to change the business model mm -hmm. and the media owner is used to getting revenue from advertising, it becomes a challenge to have a position. Mm -hmm. And if you want to tell stories that impact, you know, mm -hmm thought processes around elections, mm -hmm. thought processes around, you know, a developmental issue. Mm -hmm. It becomes a challenge because such things don't sell. Uh -huh. and, in Af and in Kenya, we have a challenge because we don't have public mm -hmm. broadcast mm -hmm. that is independent, mm -hmm. something like BBC, yes. that basically challenges the system uh -huh. and basically gives us a, a, a space where objectives or... Um, 
you know, facts can be told mm -hmm. without interference from mm -hmm. media owners. So well, we have a big challenge that uh -huh. way. Clearly, we have a challenge there. Now, uh, Omoyo, once again, uh, the reason as to why media has been under fire, in Kenya especially after the August 8th election, is because of what viewers are saying that, you know, media houses should have had their own tiling center, relay their own results, and uh, by then, by that, we could have known who won uh, the election on August 8th. First of all, let me just begin with this. Where has it been written down that media houses must have a tiling center? <laughs> well, it wasn't written down until the media said they were going to have their own tiling center. Mm -hmm. That must be clear. It's, it's the media, the editors, the uh, media owners who said the media is going to have their own tiling center to verify. I remember I've had the editors saying that we are going to deploy up to 40 or 50,000 cameras and reporters in the field. Mm -hmm. So really, it is the media that created that expectation. Yes. And naturally, if you tell people that we're going to have our own tiling center, mm -hmm. They expect you to give them the numbers at the end of the day, especially when the numbers are being contested left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. So I would say the media basically failed because they raised the people's expectations. Mm -hmm. And that's why even, uh, I think earlier, about one hour ago, I saw one uh, tweet asking, where are the numbers from the media houses? Mm -hmm. Because the people do not demand that media houses uh, tally. The media houses say, we are going to tally. It's our democratic right. We have reporters. We have invested in cameras and all that. So really, I think the media owes it to Kenyans mm -hmm. to show them the numbers they have collected from the field. Yeah, but people should bear in mind that this is also a private entity. Now, Nakia, this is where I want to bring you in. On August 8th, Kenya, of course, had its own election, and Kenyans expected media houses to have their own tiling uh, center. Let me just pose that question that I'd asked uh, uh, Omoyo earlier. Is it compulsory for media houses to have these sort of tiling centers any, any time we have elections? You know, I, I think it may not be the worst thing in the world for a media house to have their own tiling section mm -hmm. um, uh, centers. Certainly to um, compare that against what the IABC has tallied. Mm -hmm. um, and in, certainly in a case like we just saw in August the 8th election, in, yeah. which was overturned on September the 1st, mm -hmm. I think that would have been significant and certainly added to the particular petition that was put before the, the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So perhaps, you know, there, there is some need for other associations to kind of have shadow um, tallying in centers in addition to the IABC. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the, the magic answer is actually. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we're almost out of time. I would like to hear your final comments on this, that those who've accused the media of giving uh, the Gideri man, I'm sure you're aware of this uh, character because uh, he became famous after that August mm -hmm. 8th election, that those who are saying that the media houses had given him more coverage and they forgot about you know, the discrepancies that were happening in these polling stations. Your final comments on that as we wind up. Let me just start with you, uh, Omoyo, once again. Uh, I, I would say the people are right. The mm -hmm. media missed the issues and started engaging too much on sideshows. Mm -hmm. The media has a role to follow up stories that they highlight. So even the morning of voting day, mm -hmm. you report and say the following polling centers have not opened and all that. You yes. owe it to your viewers, listeners and mm -hmm. readers to come later in the day and tell them, Either the centers have been opened mm -hmm. or they have been closed completely. If you talk about certain equipment that has failed, mm -hmm. you owe it to really follow up and, and close uh, what you opened. Mm -hmm. So what we have is uh, a media that does what someone was telling me this morning. Please carry everything available. Mm -hmm. Nothing organized. You report yeah. something at 7. Mm -hmm. We expect an automatic follow-up later at 9 or 1. You mm -hmm. forget about everything. You are introducing something else around the whole issue. Yes. So eventually you have your viewers and listeners confused. Wow. We lack uh, what the journalists call the string in a story. Mm -hmm. The follow-up, we reported this morning, this is how far we have gone, this is the response we have got, and all that. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of uh, disjointed let reporting. Me, yes, let me cross over to White. Now, White, we have only 30 seconds uh, for you. There are a lot of criticism against, especially Kenyan media during the August 8th elections. Uh, do you think there are some positive elements that can be captured from how media covered the election? Um, I do. I mm -hmm. think that there are a number of, of positive elements um, in the way that they um, reported the election. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they, media in general, mm -hmm. did their best to really 
you know, talk about the election process and what will happen. I think that they were fair, some of the media houses at least, uh, in both uh, the written uh, newspapers as well as um, on TV, so mm-hmm. traditional media and, and new media. I think that they were pretty fair in um, letting both of the candidates uh, here have their voices heard. What I don't think was great is all there were eight or nine can- presidential candidates. I'm not sure if all of their voices were equally heard, and I think that that would have been important as well, mm-hmm. so that at least uh, potential voters or potential f- supporters would have been able to hear all of the particular candidates and, and their point of views. But I think overall, the media within um, the, the space that they had to do mm-hmm. or to work in, I think that they did a, a, a really good job. Thank you for that, uh, uh, White. Now, Koki, you also have 30 more seconds. What are mm-hmm. your final comments? I think the media adopted technology quite well. I could see the screens coming up with numbers, you know, um, uh, a lot of analysis about what is happening or what is, um, you know, perceived to happen in a given Mm -hmm. region. I could see presenters actually, you know, interrogating numbers and Mm -hmm. trying to talk about the possibilities of whom would be winning in that particular area. Mm -hmm. I think that was well done. However, I just think that there would, there's just too many talk heads in the studio who are experts who are supposed to add value from their point of view and enrich what is going on. But it seems as if it's just a back and forth uh, in support of each particular political party mm-hmm. without exactly you know, telling us about the process and adding value to what is expected mm-hmm. or what is peculiar or what is new Yes. or giving an advisory to mm-hmm. the media as to mm-hmm. what to tell the public mm-hmm. and to meet the, so, to meet the so, social expectations of the public. Definitely. This is a debate that will still continue. Thank you very much, Koki Robio Cheng, for your input. Of course, Koki is a lecturer at the USIU Africa. Nakia White, many thanks for your input as well. Nakia is a communication strategist. And finally, Omoyo Moyo, thank you for your input as well. He is the CEO of Media Council of Kenya. And earlier, our viewers, we did ask you what are your thoughts about media coverage of electoral processes in Africa? Let me just sample a few of your views here. And at a toe speaking a truth to power, says now uh, he's saying if Rail is elected Jubilee. Okay, forget about that. And, and then we have another one here from Muteti who says the media just fell Kenyans, plain and simple. You seem to be very busy, but we didn't see the fruits of your labor. And then we have at Abdurra who says you don't seem to care about humanity. People are at risk of dying out of hunger in Turkana, Marsabit, Ishiel, as well as Samburu. And then we have another one uh, from Laura Mwendo who says where uh, you concentrate much on petty issues, not bothering the most important ones. Mutmishi Jari Momogi says the states in Africa have overrun the media to an extent that they cannot freely report electoral processes. Those, ju- those are just some of your views uh, on that uh, topic we had for you earlier in this program. For now, our images of the day are from the Reed Dance Ceremony in KwaZulu Natal province in South Africa that celebrates uh, virginity. Every year, in early spring, tens of thousands of virgin young women dance topless in the front of the Zulu king. This tradition was instituted by the Zulu king in 1984. A symbol of Zulu and Swazi culture, this practice remains controversial because it is meant to encourage young women to remain uh, just in a country where the rate of age is one of the highest in the world. It symbolizes ourselves that we are still a virgin and we are proud of our culture. We have fun here and they teach us how to behave as we are young ladies uh, for future. It turned out to be a weapon for the HIV AIDS because the king preaches purity, uh, no man until you get married. So in that way the girls are safe from uh, infectious diseases. Uh, from uh, premature pregnancy and all other uh, 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 social ills, the girls are free. So that is why we we happy to, to continue with this. Well, and it's about time we look at our proverb of the day.
Finally, and here is our editorial tonight. The media is an integral part of any election process. As we have seen with the example of Kenya's electoral process, transparency is key in gaining the trust and confidence of all parties involved. The role the media plays in such a process, therefore, cannot be overstated. Despite the political passions exhibited by interested parties during elections around the continent, we in media carry a critical responsibility to report objectively and impartially, while at the same time engage in a deliberate balancing act to carry out our watchdog responsibility on behalf of the ordinary members of the public. Now, this deliberate balancing act, ladies and gentlemen, make the difference between peace and conflict, justice and injustice, and above all, public trust and institutions institution tasked to run the all-important doctrine of democracy. The media have been criticized on several occasions of skewing content to serve imaginary political masters. Simply put, the media stands accused in some quarters of having its priorities upside down. Whereas we cannot claim moral righteousness on all levels of accusation, I can authoritatively state that the fourth state is a craft at a constant internal review, all in an effort to ensure what we present is truthful, credible, and verifiable. And this therefore dispels another narrative that media in Africa is used more for its entertainment value than its ability to inform the masses and imp on important subjects such as development programs and investigative pieces that will give traction to media's public watchdog role. A perfect example right here in Kenya during the August 8th election where the Gideri man arguably got more coverage than the widespread discrepancies that had marred the vote tallying process. The long and short is that the mass media finds itself at crossroads at times in its quest for more latitude to gain press freedom and, as expected, political and sometimes criminal forces would seek to silence the media in their broader struggle for power. As much as many would like to bash the media aside, remember the press is just but a reflection of the society. It mirrors what the society is all about, what it stands for and what it believes in. The media owe it to the citizens to expose the rot but also inform on best practices that can transform society and vice versa. And that is the bottom line tonight. Many thanks for watching. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim. That has been Bottom Line Africa. Remember, this show is aired every Monday to Thursday from 10 to 11 p.m. See you again tomorrow, the same time, same place. Bye-bye for now and enjoy the rest of your night.